Thank you very much for joining me, Georgia May. Oh, good. Thanks for having me, Shane. You're very welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And uh, I think Dive Club is going to be, if it isn't already, an international success. So congratulations. Thank you. I mean, I hope so. I hope it's something that audiences are really excited to watch and, you know, something that projects sort of Aussie film and TV into that international teen space as well, because, you know, we make some really amazing stuff down here. Oh, yeah. Australia. <laughs> yeah. I'm, um, I'm an advocate for Australian uh, projects, filmmaking, uh, whether it's television or film. So to see this quality production, and as you say, there's been so much quality production over many years, and you're part of it. How did you, did you get asked by the producers? Did you audition? How did you become part of Dive Club? Yeah, well, basically, um, I did audi audition just like I do a million times a day. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this one, you know, it really stood out for me. Initially, it was considered an untitled streamer project. So, you know, whenever you see that, you get excited because the streamers and the streaming platforms that are available now are global, right? So. Oh, yeah. As soon as that audition came across, I was excited, read the script, it instantly pulled me in. Um, I was really excited that it was going to be filmed in, you know, far north Queensland, that it was going to be produced by an Aussie production company that was backed by, you know, an international um, streamer. Yeah. So, yeah, it was quite a rigorous round of auditions. There was about five or so, quite a few tests, um, and it took many, many months of will it, won't it, will it, won't it. And, you know, eventually towards the end of the last year, it was sort of just like a week's notice. Okay, you're going. Is that all? Um, yeah, like it was It was very, very quick. There was a lot of pushbacks. Um, we're not going to talk about COVID because it's so boring. But, um, Thank yeah, you. Obviously, obviously COVID, you know, pushed everything back. And we're all, most of us are Sydney-based, so... You know, mm. we were essentially literally immersed in Cape Mercy for four months <laughs> straight with no friends or family. Um, yeah, but obviously why the show, I think it looks so great on screen because we built such strong relationships quite quickly because we had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell the connection between um, some of the, the actors that you are in scenes with, but as an ensemble, you yeah. must have had some fun on set because it translates on screen. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're all roughly the same age. We're all at similar points in our career as well. Yeah. With, you know, having worked as well with people who have had lots of jobs or, you know, are really um, international celebrities, that kind of thing. It's nice to work with people on the same playing field because there's a real sense of sort of cohesion and right. to make a show, you know, really successful. Um, so I really enjoyed that for sure. Do you think there could be a movie spin-off? Because some, uh, sometimes there's spin-offs, you know, from popular television shows. Do you think you could take it further? I mean, look, I definitely think there's um, the opportunity for it to be made into sort of a movie as well. I definitely think it has, um, similarly to sort of H2O, Mako Mermaids, I definitely think there's yeah. a plot there that could be extended into a show, TV series, more of a brand. Yes. Um, because I can't tell you the audience reaction, which obviously the audience age is between, I'd say, 10 to 16. Oh, I think so, yeah. But it does translate, I think, to a yeah. few other demographics. I mean, yeah, and that's the feedback we've been getting, right? Like a lot of parents who watched it with their children are also quite pleasantly surprised at how engaging it was as yeah. a teen show you know like there was the sense of pace and there was you know you wanted to know every at the end of every episode it was cliffhangers like oh my god what's happened to this girl like yeah. what actually is occurring which I think was quite a nice thing because I think you know teen and children's shows tend to get brushed off into this kind of I think um, so yeah like this sort of lamer not as exciting category um so that was amazing feedback because, you know, pleasing parents is half the battle. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you can make a good family-friendly show such as this, you're halfway there. Uh, 
Yeah, I think so. And um, I mean, I'm older than that demographic it's, it's set up for, but I, was, I enjoyed the episodes I've seen so far and I haven't watched the whole episode, but I'm looking forward to where it moves on to next. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the thing that's really left with audiences is it, it just ends on such a cliffhanger mm. that, you know, I'm even eager to see what happens next. Where does the story go? Mm. Because it's such a dramatic ending that, you know, a lot of feedback we've been getting is, okay, well, this is just annoying. What, what happened? <laughs> like, we want to see more of what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think spoiler free, uh, I can see it, it it really going into some interesting territory. So yeah, looking Agreed. forward to it. Spoiler free, so can I. At surfing, can you surf and have you always been a surfer or, or is it part of your DNA? I mean, I, I grew up essentially on the beach. Yeah. Um, but in terms of my surfing ability, I'm probably bit better than a beginner um I get out pretty frequently I, I really just enjoy being in the water yeah um I'm no Lane Beachley for sure but um you know it's just for me being in the water and just getting amongst it is why I love to surf <laughs> I'm not gonna be the next blue crush superstar but <laughs> well you never know there's been two blue crush movies there, there could be a third you'd be, uh, be third. on the short list <laughs> Uh, if you weren't an actor or a performer, what occupation do you think you'd be doing? I mean, so when I'm not acting and performing, I'm I also I'm a producer as well. So okay. I have a background in journalism. Um, I'm obsessed with sort of just getting to the crux of stories and you know, piecing together all of these elements to find out information. Yeah. Um, but at the moment I I'm a producer as well. I work on a variety of shows. Um, at the moment, I'm doing Sunrise and a couple of other shows. So I think if I wasn't acting, I would also be doing this. But it's just so happens that they both kind of fall into the same category. <laughs> so, I didn't know that about you, that you were yeah. producing as well, because producing is a whole different entity than acting, even though it's uh, the same business as such. It is so different I mean mm. I feel I guess I feel kind of lucky that um I get to see both sides of it um and that's why I love being involved with projects because I can see how much of a collaborative experience yeah. filmmaking actually is like anyone that thinks it's this solo thing or no. it isn't going to work out um but yeah I like like we were speaking about prior to this interview it's definitely something that's been in my blood um yes from a very very <laughs> young age so yeah I've definitely seen all sides of the industry <laughs> well seeing you've you've started that I want to touch on uh your mum especially uh you want to tell people who she is and tell me about some of the sets that you were on as as a child growing up and what you saw it must have been fun and you must have been treated like royalty <laughs> I mean, um, well, my mum's Alyssa Jane Cook. Um, yes. So w most people, I guess, who grew up in the 90s would have watched something that she was on. Um, the big show she did was A Street, which was really quite popular um, and quite groundbreaking for its time, which yeah. I feel really proud to say because, you know, when we speak about her experiences on that show, um, it's really left such a legacy in Australia and, um, you know, for me, growing up on sets, um, I wasn't born yet when she was filming East Street, but, you know, she was on Home and Away, she did Country Practice, um, The Cloud's Daughters, she did Farscape, which was super quirky, um, going... Cult, that's a cult show. That is a cult show. Um, but, yeah, I mean, being around that environment and just seeing sort of how many people are involved and just how dedicated my mum was whilst yeah. being a mother. Yeah. Um, it was super inspiring. Like, and I never felt like I missed out on anything or I just loved being with her and watching her just work and get immersed in these characters. She was just so focused. <laughs> yes. 
And are you that way? Are you focused when you're acting, doing the same thing or even producing? Are you, is that all you're focusing on, whatever that task is? Yeah, I'm very, um, I would say I'm, I'm a really headstrong person. Like once I am sort of doing something, working on a project, it's sort of just like that's, I just have tunnel vision. That's all I kind of focus on. And I guess that's why I love acting so much because it's this short period of time in your <laughs> life that you can be someone else, experience all these other experiences you perhaps would never have had in your normal life. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's what drew me to it. Just this fully immersed experience in a character. So as an actor, and it was a real commitment to a certain project, would you be willing to change your appearance, put on weight, shave your hair, do, you know, do anything like that? You're committed? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I'm actually quite method. Like I, you know, my dream role would be something kind of futuristic or something where I could, you know, even do something like shave my head. Like I would love to do a role that's a bit edgier. Um, yep. That's kind of where I would really like to sit. And for me, there's no question if the role was to put on weight or I don't know, get braces or something just really unique. Yeah. I am a hundred percent that girl. I, yeah, I'm, I'm really done with the long blonde. Hair <laughs> <look>. <laughs> well, trust me, it suits you, but I admire your dedication and Thank I like, you. I love method actors. I think that's a, a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unusual, but I think, you know, you've got to somehow become this other person and, you know, in a safe way, of course. Um, mm, yeah. So I think that's definitely a big part of the job. Did you go to acting school or was it just uh, off your mum, you know, you got help from your mum and you grew up naturally an actor? <laughs> I mean, I did. So I studied in America um, for a year or so. And oh, okay. Yeah, I studied there, but um, basically, you're right. Like, I definitely had um, not in an art myself way or anything like that. I just had a bit more of a knack for performing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I went to a performing arts high school and having my mum to be able to read scenes with or help me with tapes. That's great, yeah. It's great, but she was, you know, she's so supportive, but she is the harshest critic ever that is out there. So she'll be the first person to tell me, if it's a bad or good take. Oh, that's um, good, to be honest. Which is good. I, I, you know, it would have been strange to have a mom that was super coddling with this industry. I think, you know, she's really helped me build this tough skin. Yeah. Um, and obviously doing acting school, right, it is such a quirky experience. And I can imagine. Yeah, you know, everyone's an individual and it's all about just, you know, becoming the true thespian. Um, yeah, I loved acting school. I, I'm keen to go back. <laughs> really? Oh, that's interesting. That's good. No, to I, know. I love acting. Like, if, you know, yeah. I just anything to get the opportunity to perform, um, even yeah. if it's in front of a classroom. <laughs> <laughs> when you um, when a scene requires you to cry, uh, what inspiration do you use to, to cry or do you can cry on demand? Well, to be honest, I... I do find it easy to cry on demand. Okay. Yeah, for me, the big thing is um, it all comes down to personal real experiences, right, which sure. brings on that emotion. So as soon as you start thinking about, you know, something horrible happening in your family or your partner, for me, the tears come easy. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing because my partner would probably say the tears <laughs> come way too easy. <laughs> okay. Um, for Dive Club, a lot of my um, sort of scenes were, it was quite heightened, the stakes. Mm. There was a lot of sort of <sighs> huffing and, mm. you know, a lot of crying or like perplexed looks. Mm. Um, so, yeah, for me, it was, you know, a lot of that internal stuff going on the whole time. So it was tiring once you got home. <laughs> <laughs> now did you have any injuries on set I mean Queensland can be a very hot place and lots of bugs <laughs> anything happened to you on set of dive club um look nothing luckily nothing happened but there, <laughs> there were definitely scary moments I mean we capsized a boat in a shot and realized you know we weren't supposed to there were box jellyfish oh um, 
there were also crocs so it was very much like get in the boat or you know something could happen to you yeah <laughs> there was a lot of midges which were horrific anything basically everything we did was in water right so yeah. especially right. at dusk we filmed a lot sort of at that late evening kind of time frame and we got bitten alive um Ooh. all part of the fun um we didn't know you were supposed to take you know i think it was b12 pills prior to oh, okay yeah just something to you know get your body used to it but no no we all went in just so excited um but you know it was it made it it was part of the experience when i look back on it right like we <laughs> remember the mid g's and the potential crocs and the filming in black water at night mm. um yeah nothing i no injuries it was a very very safe environment glad to hear that well for anyone who doesn't know what midges are they're very small and i've had them they can get inside your wetsuit oh yes not good <laughs> they are not good and they leave marks which is not great for tv no not at all <laughs> uh, now christmas is coming up in at the time we're recording this um what are you doing for christmas and what does christmas mean to you in general family time i assume yeah i mean for me i don't ever know how to take a break and to not be working so for me the christmas time is really just an opportunity to have sort of a forced break um and a lot of my family do live in Queensland. So we're all going to finally be together this year. Oh, so, terrific. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. And um, the last three Christmases or so, I haven't been in Sydney. So I, I've never spent a Christmas with my partner. Oh, um, that's, yeah, that's so really good to hear. Yeah, it'll be great to spend some time with him and just sort of have a normal, normal <laughs> experience <laughs> of Christmas. Uh, a couple more before we wrap up. Yeah. Uh, it's, hard, it's a hard question, but maybe can you name me a couple of your all-time favourite movies, uh, you know, or maybe something that you love watching when you're a child and you still watch to this day? Something that I still love. I mean, for me, I loved watching Kira Knightley in Bend It Like Beckham. For me, that oh. was a massive, that movie for me. That's an inspiration role, inspirational role that from her. Inspirational role um, and just, you know, she's a massive inspiration for me, just, you know, career-wise, artistically. And I watched that movie a thousand times. Like I just loved everything about sort of the character development and her as a person. Um, so for me, that movie definitely stands out as one that sort of made me feel like, okay, I have to do this. Yeah. Um, anything with Rachel McAdams. Um, I know everyone probably says that, but her notebook audition, which is online, has got to be one of the most breathtaking tapes I've ever seen. Mm. Um, and I watch that constantly for inspiration. I mean, just the ability to just switch it on and yeah. you know, take it to a whole nother level. And I saw recently that um Britney Spears actually also auditioned for that character. And isn't it amazing? I was aware of that. Yeah, but isn't it amazing to think how, you know, such, you know, how different a certain casting could have been. Oh, yeah. Could have been. So, yeah, those two actresses, anything that they have done is, they're definitely my inspiration sort of films for sure. Well, Brittany did Crossroads, and I like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she did. <laughs> She's a good actor. I just, her in the notebook, it was it was Rachel's role. Oh, yeah, and, I mean, I've seen that online too, that yeah. uh, that tape that she did. Now, do you ever, do you, have you ever thought of all those um, audition tapes that you do? Could you do that monologue and maybe send it to someone and they, get, <laughs> they, they might see Rachel McAdams in you then? I mean, totally. Look, there's so many amazing <laughs> scripts and stuff that are out there nowadays. I think for me, it's finding that one that really hits similarly mm. to Rachel's one. I don't think the whole recreating of these iconic, you know, moments can be quite hard. Um, but I can't even begin to tell you how many tapes I think I've done in my life. I, I saw the other, it would at least be over a thousand by now. Um, that's incredible over how many years do you think well, just probably from six so probably about 10 years or so that's still so, a lot. Yeah. yeah I mean 
you know, I, I usually do a couple a week. So yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of tapes. I can't, I've all my computers. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, okay. So please let me know. Um, we're going to finish off a little bit more on dive, dive club, but yeah. um, what, what projects are you up to next? Is there anything that you can share that fans might want to, you know, look out for, or are you doing a musical? Maybe you can do a song, you know, on stage. Yeah, I mean, look, nothing that I can sort of talk about as of yet. Um, sure. I'm in between talks for a, a couple of things, which is which is really exciting. And I just, you know, I just want to be back on set. That's whatever yeah. that means. That's just all I want to be doing. Um, sure. I also, I originally started, my whole background was really centered around singing and performing. And then mm. I sort of fell more into acting. So you know, I would love the opportunity to do something where there is more singing and dancing involved. Um, so, yeah, definitely been doing quite a few musical theatre auditions and Good. But it's, you know, it's even more competitive than acting sometimes. <laughs> well, the, the Theatre Royale in Sydney has just about to be reopened because it's been refurbished. Uh, there might yeah. be some more live show productions you can get involved with. Totally. I mean, he's hoping Sydney, Sydney and Australia in general really needs it. We really need a boost in the arts for sure. So the final word on Dive Club, in your own, own words, your own opinion, why should people watch it and what will they get out of it? Because I know what I got out of it. It's a lot of fun and there's some interesting yeah. cast members, a lot of diversity and yeah. some good, good storylines. So in your own words, why should people watch it? people should watch dive club because it's a story about mystery friendship and also like a true sense of identity I feel like it's sort of a coming of age story about you know women that will do anything for a girlfriend and I think you know there's not a lot of shows that have central themes that sort of stick to those central themes yeah. throughout the whole show yeah. I feel like you know, sometimes shows with these higher sort of um, ratings, it can get lost, that kind of core values. And I feel like Dive Club is that perfect mix of adult and teen, whilst it has this really interesting story arc and quite a few quirky fun moments. I mean, it's such a fun script. Um, I feel like it's perfect to watch with the family and, you know, yeah. all recommend to younger cousins or you know friends um I definitely think it's a show that everyone will enjoy it's it's very hard not to <laughs> <laughs> and it also features one of my friends yes Kasim oh yes so, <laughs> it's one of your co-stars so I've known quite some time now and she's a lovely person and actress and, and a surfer so yeah there's she a, you're in amazing girl she really is and she's such a talented actress and yeah. yeah it was really fun getting to know her as well I mean all of these experiences right are about getting to know other people so definitely definitely yeah. well I, I want to thank you for joining me and uh, I hope we catch up at some time for real and good luck in the future yes I agree I'd love to catch up now that we can <laughs> <laughs> thanks Jane bye see you